Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So, one point that I've made in quite a lot of my previous videos is simply to state that a sword alone is usually outmatched by a sword coupled with another weapon. Now obviously in later periods, I often talk about um, the 19th century for example, I'm often talking about a sword used with a pistol and very clearly a pistol gives you a big edge in any kind of combat, ranged or hand to hand. But in earlier periods, in the ancient period, the medieval period, um, the Renaissance, if you've just got a sword, usually that means that it's a backup weapon. Yeah. So I talked about this in my previous video that pretty much a sword is usually a secondary weapon, but there are some exceptions to that. And one of the most common exceptions um, is where the sword is your only hand-to-hand -hand combat weapon, or your main hand-to-hand -hand combat weapon, because you're primarily engaged doing something else. An example might be archers. If your main job is to shoot arrows, then really, realistically, the only hand-to-hand -hand combat weapon you can usually carry is something along the lines of a sword, or maybe a mace, or an axe, or something like this. But you can usually only carry one weapon around. And I've also done a previous video talking about role-playing games and computer games where uh, people magically procure weapons out of their sack of carrying or whatever. And in fact, you know, I've mentioned a lot of times I play Mountain Blade. Um, sometimes I play the native version uh, multiplayer, sometimes I play Napoleonic Wars. But in the native version, I think it's freaking hilarious how you can have a pike uh, you can be running around with a sword and go, oh yeah, I've got a pike, Zoom, sword goes away, pike comes out. Where were you, car where were you carrying a 16-foot pike? Hello? Um, uh, and, you know, that's one of the things that really annoys me about computer games, is where someone can pull out a weapon out of nowhere that they couldn't possibly wear or carry while using the other weapon that they'd just, just been using, previously been using. Okay, so if you're using a bow or throwing spears or using a pike or using a howl, a sword might be your backup weapon, okay? In some situations, yes, swords are primary weapons, as I spoke about in the previous video. If you're wearing lots of uh, armour, then a sword might be the best hand-to-hand -hand combat weapon in some scenarios. Um, if, if indeed you're you know, an officer with a pistol, then that might be your primary hand-to-hand -hand combat weapon is your sword, though of course you've got a pistol as well. Or indeed, people like sailors, because they need their hands free, so they might wear a cutlass, um, but they, to be able to run around ship and stuff, but that might be their primary weapon. Um, now, I also talk about shields. When people have got shields, um, the sword can also be a primary weapon, and that is because the shield itself is such a game changer, and it enables you to close distance much more effectively. Um, and therefore, against people with pole weapons, say for example I'm fighting against people who, most of them have spears, um, either spears with shields or spears on their own. If I've got the shield, it might be that I choose to just use a sword with my shield because actually in that scenario that's not a bad thing to do because um, spear and shield against sword and shield, actually there's not really a big advantage to either side. Spear has the advantage of reach, um, but if I get past that reach, actually if the person's using the spear one-handed, um, in actual fact, at close range, my sword is a lot more able to do different different attacks from different angles. I can cut, I can thrust, I can cut down to the legs, I can do this kind of thing. So, in actual fact, at close range, and in fact, at any range really, if you've got shields involved, then swords actually are pretty much as good as spears a lot of the time. Of course, a spear is cheaper, so uh, traditionally lots of people kept spears rather than swords, but a sword can certainly match the spear one for one if there are large shields involved. Um, and that is the most critical point to mention. Now, another point I really want to make in this video, uh, and this is the main point of the video actually, is that simply having a shield doesn't double your effectiveness. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, someone might, if they're making, for example, a role-playing game um, set of rules or something, they might go, okay, I've got a sword, I'm going to add maybe another sword or a, a, something in my left hand, an, an axe or a shield into the equation. Does that now mean that I have a sword, if we call the sword worth 10 points and we call the shield worth 10, 10 points, does that now mean that I have 20 points of effectiveness? No. Why is that? Well, quite simply, uh, there are two main reasons, the way that I think of it anyway, and you might have other ways of explaining this. But fundamentally, the sword is actually able to do more things by itself, in my opinion, 
um, than it is when it's coupled with something else. And that is because when you've got something else, one side of your body, especially with a shield, this isn't always true of all weapons, for example rapier and dagger may escape this to an extent, but when you've got a large object in your left arm, it changes lots of things about how you fight. It changes, uh, for example, you've got something in the way, okay? So if I'm using just a sword, if you imagine I've just got a sword here, I can freely attack from any angle, okay, without any impediment. impediment. Um, and um, if I've got a shield, that's no longer the case. Now, yes, you could say, ah, but there are things you can do with the shield in hand that you can't do when you've just got the sword. For example, you could cover a line with the shield at the same time as attacking with the sword. Yes, that's true. However, fundamentally, the sword itself can actually do slightly fewer things when you've got something else in the way. So, for example, if I take a sword, a, say a side sword, and I fight someone who's using a side sword and a buckler, are they twice as effective at fighting as me? No. Okay? They are slightly more effective. They have a slight advantage. In fact, some people would argue a significant advantage. In my experience, it's not. It's a slight advantage of sword and buckler versus sword alone. So one reason is because that thing's in the way. The second reason is how you stand. If you've got two objects, they're attached to your two arms, assuming you have two arms. Your two arms are attached to your two shoulders. That means that when you're using each of these things, naturally, it will uh, influence the other, okay? So if I'm held shield forward, that means that my sword shoulder is back. I've now reduced my reach, okay? But if I want to increase my reach and I come sword shoulder forward, I now reduce the coverage of my shield because my shield shoulder comes back. So both objects can't operate, and you could say, okay, well then you can stand square on, so both shoulders have got equal reach. But then I'm incredibly square tar um, target for the opponent, I'm very wide target for the opponent. Um, I've actually got slightly less reach than I would do if I turned one of the shoulders forward, okay? Um, and equally, my feet are now level. Yeah, I could put one foot in front and one foot back. But if I'm stood very square on like this, it's generally not a very good position to be in. Most fencing is carried out with one shoulder forward of the other. And it can be either way around. And one way you gain reach and one way you gain cover. Um, there's another reason as well, which I, I think some people might, um, might dismiss, but I think it's important. And that's your brain. Um, fundamentally, I find that people learn single weapons be it longsword or sabre or backsword or whatever, they learn single weapons quicker than they learn to use both their hands. That's not necessar necessarily to do with ambidexterity or anything like that, although some people might argue it's related. It's more to do with the fact that your brain can only process a certain amount of stuff in a certain amount of time. And if you're trying to coordinate two objects, your brain is doing more work than or rather it's splitting its attention between those two objects than if you've just got one object. So I find that by and large, people's complexity of uh, movement, or, or at least the speed with which they can learn complexity of movement, with a single um, longsword or a single sabre or a single rapier, is quicker, they can get up to speed, they can learn quicker to do those things with a single weapon than they can with paired weapons. Many people I know, myself included, have problems becoming proficient with sword and buckler because it's a relatively complex thing because you're moving two objects at the same time and it's very easy to mess up. So what I would say in conclusion without wittering, wittering on for too long and the main point I really wanted to make in this video is that single sword alone um, is not half as effective as sword and shield, okay, or sword and any other object. It's actually that yes, sword and shield or sword and other object does have an advantage over single sword alone, but because of the advantages of using a single sword alone, which primarily, if I just dump the shield down, primarily relates to how you can stand and also how you can move the weapon now without another thing in the way, um, plus the fact that your brain is now only thinking about this one object for most of the time. You might say you've got other objects to think about, like your hand and stuff, but for most of the time it's now thinking about this one object. It means that 
using a single sword alone is actually only a bit less uh, potent, shall we say, to using sword and buckler, sword and dagger, sword and shield. Um, and one other thing I would say is don't forget that, as I hinted at a second ago, if you're using a single sword, yes, you might not have the advantage of the shield or the buckler, but you do have this, okay? And most of the time, this is not used. But very occasionally, if you get a cover in, boom, bam, you can use this. So it's a weapon in reserve. And indeed, against someone using a shield, for example, you can use that shield against them. If you can grab the edge of that shield or push it, um, just bind against it. Um, so if a person attacks, attacks you, you cover it, you've got the shield line there, you manage to cover the shield, boom. Um, there are things you can do with your left hand. It is not a useless object. Okay, so there we go. Simply to sum up, single sword alone is not half as effective as sword and other object. It's actually slightly less effective, but not as much as you might think. Cheers, folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon, or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.